Welcome to the C++ track of RoboJacket software training. In these videos, we'll be learning about the C++ programming language. C++ is a generic systems programming language, popular in robotics applications because it gives us high-level abstractions while still allowing direct access to low-level hardware. In the short time we have for software training, we won't be able to cover the entire language. We'll be focusing on the parts of the language and standard library that come up most frequently when using C++ in the context of the ROS framework. For these videos, we're not going to bother setting up an IDE or compiler, because our projects will rely on the build tools provided by ROS. If you do want a quick environment to test a small amount of C++ code, I recommend using the Compiler Explorer website at godbolt.org. This is an online tool that lets you compile and run code in a variety of languages with many different compilers. It will even show you the assembly form of the compiled code so you can get a better picture of the output your compiler is actually generating. And here's what Compiler Explorer looks like when we first load it up. On the left, we have our source editor where we can write our code. In this case, it defaults to just a little demo for squaring an integer. And on the right, we see the compiled output for our program. This is showing us the actual assembly instructions that the GCC compiler has generated for us. Now for our purposes, we're probably more interested in seeing what the output of the program is when we run it. So we can get a new execution only view by going to this add new button and selecting execution only. And then we'll go ahead and close the tab that's showing our assembly output. So now the left side is still our source editor, but the right side is now showing us the output of our program when we run it. We've got some errors showing up right now, but we'll fix that in a moment. We have the ability to set any compiler options we want, pass in arguments on the command line to our program, or even include some of the popular C++ libraries into our demo project. Now that we've got this set up, let's create a minimal hello world program in C++. And here's what that looks like. This is the code we used, and when we run our program, we see the message, hello RoboJackets. All programming languages have to define an entry point, the place where our program will actually start executing our code. In C++, this is a special function called main. This function returns an integer for our program's exit status code. This value might be checked by our operating system or other programs for various purposes. Most of the time, returning zero indicates that our program closed normally and non-zero exit codes indicate some kind of problem. The parameters for main give us access to any command line arguments passed to our program when we ran it. argc tells us the count of how many arguments were given, and argv tells us the value of those arguments as an array of arrays of characters. This style of handling an array of strings is inherited from the C programming language. We won't dive further into handling command line arguments, as in our real code, Ross handles that for us. This line in the middle is what actually makes our program do something. In this case, it just prints the message hello RoboJackets to the console. It does this by using the insertion operator to send our message string to this global character output object. This is a good opportunity to talk about one more resource that's very useful when working in C++, cppreference.com. This website hosts detailed documentation for the C++ language and standard library. It has wiki-style pages for just about every utility and concept available in the C++ standard, complete with examples. Let's take a look at the documentation for the Cout object our code uses. We can search for Cout and open up its page. This page tells us a lot about the object and its counterpart, wcout. We can learn that Cout is declared in the iostream header and that its type is std ostream. There's a detailed explanation of what it does and how it works, along with notes about historical context and potential gotchas. Further down, we get an example of its use and some related pages. There's even a button that turns this example into an interactive environment, so you can modify and run it. cppreference.com is a super useful resource whenever you're working with C++. I use it regularly to double check things and make sure I remember and understand everything correctly. Well, that's a minimal C++ program and some useful online resources. We've taken our first steps and there's a lot to learn, so I'll see you in the next video.